our Bible word is Revelation 20 verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. So this is a scene of what is commonly called the last judgment. And if we understand the context of the book of Revelation, God has conquered evil. He's destroyed the Roman Empire, if you uh, interpret the book of Revelation within its historical context. And for the seer now, God's plan of salvation is now reaching a high point. If we look on screen, of course, there's the first resurrection. And then Christ will establish his thousand year kingdom with his people and they will reign for a thousand years. And then after that, it says that the dragon will be let loose again and he will gather another army, but will be defeated. And then the dragon will be thrown into the lake of fire. And then there will be the last judgment. And that's our present pericope. That's from Revelation 20 verses 11 to 15. That is where God sits on his white throne. And we can also say this is, we can call this the second resurrection. Because earlier on, if we go to Revelation 20 verse 5, it says, But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. Because at the first resurrection, only God's people will rise. So now at the second res resurrection, that's now the rest of the dead. And now they will rise from the dead for them to be judged. Now, of course, following that will be the new heaven and the new earth. The new creation. So in our present textual unit, it describes God being the judge. But in the whole of the New Testament, both God, the Father, and Jesus judges the world and God's people. You can look at those various passages as they are listed on screen. But yeah, it's God. And if you go to chapter 20, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne. And him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. So that's a sign of judgment. The earth and heaven is fleeing from God's presence. Why? Because in a, in a way they are, are being destroyed. Because in chapter 21 it will be the new heaven and earth that will come onto the scene. So, so the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And then now we come to our Bible word. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Now, in Jewish prophetic and also apocalyptic tradition, sometimes it Books were mentioned. In other words, the, the deeds of people, be they righteous deeds or wicked deeds. So in a sense, the record is kept of what people do. And throughout the New Testament also, it says that people will be judged according to their works. I mean, you find it in Matthew, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians and 1 Peter. That people will be judged according to their works. And then... The books, so there were books that record people's deeds. And there, one specific book the seer mentions is the book of life. Now the book of life, in the, within the context of Revelation, it refers to God's people who remain faithful to him. who They don't participate in emperor worship, in, in idolatry and sorcery and the sins of the people of the Roman Empire. They remain faithful to God and God's will. If we go to chapter 3, verses 5, there are promises made to God's people who overcome. It reads, He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. So, those who remain true, to their calling as God's people. They, their names will remain in the book of life. Also, it, re, it refers to those 
who do not participate in emperor worship. Now, if we go to Revelation 13 verse 8, it speaks of those who will worship the beast. In other words, they will participate in emperor worship. It says, all who dwell on the earth will worship him. That is the beast or the Roman emperor. Who will worship him? Whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. This element of emperor worship we also encounter in chapter 17 verses 8. It says there of those who marvel of the beast and how it's in 68 AD there was a civil war after Nero's death and it looked like the Roman Empire would crumble but then the new emperor restored order. So people would marvel and say, oh, the, the Roman Empire is back and it's on its feet and it's powerful again. So there in verse 8, it, it speaks of them. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. So there again there, it's those who follow the beast, who, those who form part and parcel of life in the Roman Empire. And lastly, it's promised to those whose names are written, whose names are written in the book of life, that they will enter the new Jerusalem. If we go to chapter 21, verses 27, there it speaks of those who will not enter and those who will enter. It says, But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. So in other words, only those who do not participate in emperor worship, who remain faithful to their Christian faith, who keep the testimony of Jesus, it's those who will enter the new Jerusalem. So, again, our context is the judgment, God sitting on his big white throne, all the dead are being raised. We can call this the second resurrection. If we go to verse 13, it says, The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. Yeah, distinction is being made between two groups of dead. It's firstly, it's those that in the sea gave up the dead who were in it. So it was believed if you perish on the sea, that your soul remained under the sea somewhere or under the sea or your spirit wandered the waves or the top of the waters as a ghost. And then there's also those who died on land. And so in other words, they went to Hades, the realm of the dead, also said, called here or personified as death. So all those who perished at sea or perished on land, everyone will rise from the dead and they will be judged according to their works. And then it also describes that death and Hades itself will be thrown into the lake of fire. That is where the dragon is thrown. That's where the beast is thrown, symbolizing imperial rule. Also the followers of the beast are thrown into the lake of fire. But yeah, even death itself and Hades is thrown into the lake of fire, which is described as the second death. And in verse 15 it says, And anyone not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. In other words, it refers to those who worshipped the emperor, who participated in the sinful value system and life of the Roman Empire. They participated in sorcery and idolatry and all other forms of sin. These are the ones who will, they are, will be thrown into the lake of fire because their names were not written in the Lamb's book of life.